So I'll try and uh, describe as best I can the difference between the internally balanced and the externally balanced uh, principles between these two engines. The 360 is an externally balanced engine and it has uh, weights or it's, or it's balanced or weighted uh, outside the engine with the uh, harmonic balancer on the front and then the uh, flex plate on the back here has these has weight here and here. I'm gonna try and give a quick and dirty explanation for the balancing uh, scenario here for what I know. Now, uh, there's two types of balancing. There's a single plane balance where you have a shaft and an overhung um, object on on the shaft. So this this is just simply balanced here. Think of like a, a pulley for uh, you know, a belt-driven pulley or um, you know, um, some shivs or something like that, um, or a fan on the end of a shaft. And so what they'll do is, you know, you'll run this thing up and you're going to check for vibration and you're going to try and find out uh, where the heavy spot is. Uh, rotational um, forces uh, throw things to the outside. And when it does that, it, it increases uh, or amplifies the um, effect. So if something's not balanced, it's going to, it's kind of like if you have a, a, you know, a rock on the end of a string and you're, and you're spinning it round and round, you know, it's, it's, it's got this heavy momentum. And so what you need to do is, is either you need to counterbalance that by putting a weight opposite 180 degrees of that heavy spot, or you need to reduce that uh, heavy spot. Uh, that's the way to fix that. Now, in our case here, what we've got is we've got a rotating assembly. So we just think of a, a lot, like I just got this pipe here, right? So like if this, this pipe is, is true and uh, conform, uh, conformity from one end to the next, you shouldn't have any trouble, minimum, minimum trouble there because it's consistent in shape and size all the way through from this end to this end. But the minute we start adding stuff to this, like if, if I was to take a, a chunk of metal and I was supposed to put it here and another one here, now, now you're going to have issues. So when you have a cylindrical uh, length of, of something here that you're going to be spinning, now you need to do a two-plane balance, which means you need to balance this end and this end. Now if we look at our shaft here and we visualize that... Uh, like this is solid and we started machining portions out of it and we come up with our crankshaft. So I got an illustration here and the principle is, is we're going to balance uh, either end. So here's what we have for our engines here. Now, uh, the reason I got Magnum and LA engine written here is the difference is in that flex plate. Right, so the LA engine just has a flex plate over here. And here's our flex plate. And there's no weights on this at all. The weights will be put onto the torque converter, which bolts to the flex plate. So this is, this is the, the, big, the big deal here. If you go rebuild an engine, or you go switch in an engine, and you've got the wrong torque converter, uh, it doesn't match either your 318 or your 360, you're gonna get heavy vibrations because that's gonna throw it out of balance. Now, in the Magnum, instead of, instead of putting the weight on the torque converter, they put the weight on here, right? And they did that, I believe, because as we just said, if you switch up your torque converters, then it's a zero consequence, right? because the torque converter is not weighted, this is weighted. So in theory, you could take, for a Magnum engine, you could take a, a 318 uh, torque converter and you can mix it up with a 360 torque converter and you won't have any issues there because this is, they've balanced this and not the torque converter. Back to our illustration here, that is the difference between the Magnum and the LA engine. The Magnum engine is weighted here and the LA engine is weighted here for the 360. Uh, the 318 uh, will not have weights on, on here or here for uh, either engine. So 360 is weighted 
here on the on the flex plate for the Magnum and it's weighted on the torque converter for the LA engine. Now, so that, that takes care of the difference between the two engines. Why did they put weights here and here? Well, when, uh, when they're going to balance this rotating assembly, what we're looking at here, this is our plain illustration. So our, this, this represents like uh, the crankshaft and then in between is going to be our rotating assembly. So what they do is they try and match the weight for that rotating assembly, right? So that even in stock, what they'll do is they'll, they'll have a, a weight that they're gonna try and match all your stock rods and pistons to within, within whatever their degree is. And so they're gonna take all them connecting rods, are gonna be the same weight, your bearings are going to be the same weight. Your pistons are going to be the same weight. Your your uh, oil rings, your pins, everything that makes up the rotating assembly in the center of this cylinder here or that spacing um, needs needs to be a matched weight. And the reason that is is because now now you neutralize the center, right? So now you're going to make your your balancing adjustments on the end. And this is in, in this application, if we were to put a bearing here and a bearing here and it wasn't, it wasn't balanced, inevitably it's going to tear apart those bearings because the bearings are, are taking all of the vibration uh, forces. They're, they're what's absorbing it, right? So once they've, they've neutralized the center section, They'll weigh the uh, the rod, the piston, all that stuff, and then they'll create these bob weights, and they'll put the bob weights in on the crankshaft where the uh, piston and rod would go, right? And now what they'll do is they'll spin it up, right? So they're going to spin it up. Now they're not going to get this thing up to you know three thousand, five thousand RPM. That's too fast. It's too dangerous. So uh, the way it works is uh, it's kind of in multiples. Right, so you'll have. Um, hopefully, you can hang with me here. You'll have multiples of running speed, right? So you'll it'll just be multiplied, right? So you'll have uh, a you know a hundred RPM, and then just ramp that up to a thousand RPM. Let's say they're going to spin this thing at uh, two hundred RPM. We'll we'll say that that also represents two thousand RPM, right? Um, and just for conversation's sake, we'll say that's that's where your um, that that's where you want your engine uh, running uh, most of the time, right? That's going to be that's going to be the working point of the engine. So that's what they're going to balance it to, in theory, right? So what are they doing now? Okay, so they've neutralized the center section as we discussed with the bulb weights. They're running it up, and they're going to find out. They're going to be they're going to have a probe on either end here and that probe is going to um, record or measure the uh, vibration amplitude right and that's like we discussed earlier about this is your center point and then you have a heavy heavy object on the end and it's being spun around and around and it's going to create that momentum um, so what they're going to do is they're going to uh, these forces are kind of like working against each other right so, so like, let, let's say you got a weight spinning over here and you got a weight spinning over here. Well, if they aren't in unison, they're going to, like, this thing's going to be all wobbly and, and uh, you know, self-destructing. So what they want to do is they want to kind of match that up. And they're going to, the probe is going to measure that vibration. And then comes in all the math and they got to figure out where the heavy spot is on either end. And then they got to figure out where they have to... Uh, drill usually what they do is they just they remove material they don't add especially in the crankshaft uh, where they have to remove material to um, correct that balance so when they're spinning this up you're gonna have your harmonic balancer here you're going to have your flex plate and 
I'm assuming I have never done uh, a balance with an LA engine, but I'm assuming they would have to have that torque converter on there because that's what they're using to change uh, the weights on there. Uh, you're going to need to record that when you're doing the the balance. But um, so uh, you're going to have everything assembled here, and that's why um, the, you don't really see any adjustments made on the harmonic balancer, but it needs to be installed on here so that it can be recorded with the assembly. And in the case of the Magnum, you don't need the torque converter. It's not part of it, right? And so when they're spinning this thing up now, they're going to make those two adjustments on the ends. Here we are with the crankshaft. And so the the machine that they're using, it'll be resting right here and right here. And that's where they're going to be taking those readings at a lower RPM. Um, I don't know what that is. It could be 2000 or uh, 200 or 500 in around there. They'll decide that. And then, uh, so they're spinning this thing up. They're gonna have their bob weights where the uh, pistons and the rods and all that go. And they're gonna attach those on there. And spin it up. You're also going to have your harmonic balancer on the end, and you should have your uh, flywheel flex plate uh, on the on the back. And uh, and then once once they've determined that, here's an example of where they've drilled the hole. Now, in their math, so in this case here, we got these two these two holes here. So when they when they spun this up the machine probably told them to remove you know a lot of material well they can't they can't remove that amount of material from one spot so what they did was i imagine what it would have been was right here in the dead center so what they did was they probably did some math and then they calculated it out uh you know they chose these two vector points off of the center line where the heavy spot was and then they begin to remove the weight to neutralize that right and then again over here so our second spot should be on the end and here's our other spot so here was the one single heavy spot here and they it was enough where they could just drill one hole and remove enough material to balance that out now you'll notice that there is no holes in any of these these center ones right so that there again like we were discussing earlier this whole center section from here to here they're neutralizing that by in effect um you know in theory uh that's just one solid piece of metal you know because when they when they've uh, accounted for all of the uh weight that's going to be spun around with the pistons and the rods and the bearings and everything like that um that's what they've done. They just kind of neutralize the center section and then they're adjusting the balance on the two ends here. So after all of that, uh, we're probably wondering, you know, like uh, what's, what's the point? Um, it becomes an issue when you're going to switch and swap parts back and forth. But I mean, if you want to just keep things simple and easy, um, choose your engine. Is it going to be 318? Is it going to be 360? and just stick with that platform and, and try not to go back and forth, uh, trying to switch things back and forth and make things complicated for yourself. Um, you know, if you wanna put a 360 uh, crankshaft in a 318 and so on and so forth, things like that, right? Um, also too, uh, you can feel confident that uh, all the rods should be, uh, like if you, if you have a donor engine and uh, you're gonna replace a rod out of a factory engine um, into the you know into the one you're building. You shouldn't have an issue because all of these things uh, should be balanced to the same spec. Um, the factory rods, pistons, all that sort of thing. So there's a factory balance there, and you shouldn't need to worry as long as you stick with that platform.